computers for each station. So each kid has their own computer. Wow. They put in Wi-Fi so the kids have got their internet connection. And they said still, it was cheaper overall than having to hire temporary workers to fill in for people because they couldn't come to work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Wow, that's great. Yeah. You have all been muted. Um, I know that sound, it's, it's such a weird thing to be able to do still. But good morning and welcome to uh, church this morning. It's wonderful to see you all. We're uh, live on Facebook, being recorded and will be on YouTube later. Um, I have an external speaker that is now plugged or, or is going through to be a little bit louder in the sanctuary here. Uh, for for uh, some and um, otherwise I'm glad you're here God is good and all the time and we're going to worship uh, and before we do I have a couple quick announcements and if you'd follow along with me I would be appreciative um, and in those announcements uh, just as we go through don't forget on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 10 30 I am here somewhere sitting down and uh, you're always welcome to join me and we can have a conversation of some kind or another. Uh, see how that goes. Would love to see you. Um, and even if you just need a place to hang out for a while, come, come join me. Uh, on Tuesday at 545, we have a session meeting. You'll get information about that later session. Uh, Always on Wednesday mornings at 9.30, Lectio Divina and Centering Prayer here on the ground somewhere. Bible study on James via Zoom. You keep getting information on that. And um, it's, been a, it's been a good Bible study. I got through a whole two verses last week and we'll actually start chapter two. So it only took two months to get through chapter one and there's five chapters. So at the rate we're going, we should be done in another... Uh, well, you know, <clears throat> eight months, which is fine for five chapters of James. It's been wonderful. We'd love to have you join us, too. Uh, it's a fantastic book, especially for the times in which we live. Um, Zoom worship next Sunday, still 1030 with a coffee hour at 10 o'clock. And then one thing I'd like to point out to uh, talking to the, the children's ministry uh, people, um, we're going to do something. I think we're going to call it Halloween Hoot. It's for kids. And uh, it's going to be 4 p.m. Uh, two weeks from today on the campus ground somehow. It's going to have fun, games, a cakewalk, a surprise pumpkin. There's going to be different things, and we need to come up with it, but we're going to need people. Um, so uh, Robin, who's in charge of children's ministries, might be contacting some of you. But if you're interested in being a part of this at all, please contact her as well. Um, I know we don't have all that many children, but we're certainly going to celebrate the ones that we do have and, uh, and try to do something in this crazy time of pandemic in which we find ourselves in an effort to celebrate and to let them know that we love them. And uh, part of what they'll be doing too is coming up with uh, some kind of Halloween bags to, uh, to be distributed to those who are shut in and stuck in their homes as well. So it's not just a thing for them, but a thing for our whole community whereby we celebrate. So uh, I look forward to that. Um, always, uh, as we begin to worship, I ask you to take a moment to center yourselves and to prepare your hearts and minds to worship God. And as we do so, I invite you to listen to uh, happiness is the Lord. in fact a happy song 
If anybody would like to join me in our call to worship today, I invite you to unmute yourselves as we, uh, again, call ourselves to worship and prepare to worship the God of the universe. God be in our heads. And in, and in our understanding. understanding. God be in our eyes. And in, and in our, our seeing. seeing. God be in our mouths. And, and in, in our speaking. speaking. God be in our hearts. And, and in, in our loving, loving each, each other. other. God be in our, be our beginning, beginning our, our end, and, and, we, and when we, we leave, leave this place. place. Amen. 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 And again, I know that for some, this is cringeworthy. Uh, I actually, during my installation, there was a lovely uh, ruling elder from First Presbyterian of Slow, who, uh, who emailed me after the installation service and told me that she uh, normally has never been able to understand, uh, uh, stand, she can't stand uh, the way that singing sounds on the internet when more than one person is trying to do it. But uh, she found it incredibly joyful, at least for the installation service. So uh, I again say, let's make a joyful noise to the Lord, whatever that might be like, and uh, sing with me if you would. My word is a lamp to my feet. my way still you're there right beside me nothing will i fear for as long as you are near please be near me to the end my word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I, uh, I still enjoy it. And Christy, thank you for joining me on those things. Um, as we move on in this too, we have an opportunity to come before the throne of holiness and of grace, confessing our sins before the Lord, knowing that as we do... God will remove our sin as far as the east is from the west and remember them no more. So in the knowledge that we are about to be free, I invite you to pray with me our unison prayer of confession. Holy and Holy merciful, and merciful God, God, in your presence, in your presence we, we confess our, our sinfulness, shortcomings, and, and offenses against you. Against you. You alone, you alone know, know often how often we have wandered, wandered from your ways, from your ways wasting, wasting your, your gifts, gifts and, and forgetting, forgetting your love, your love for, us for us and others. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. We, we are sorry, sorry for, all for all that we have done that displeases you. you. Forgive, Forgive us, us and help, help us to live in your, in your light, light walk and to walk in your, in your ways. For the, for the sake of Jesus Christ, Christ our, our Savior, Savior, and our, and our hope. <sighs> and together as the children of God, let us say... Amen. 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 But also hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn us? Only Christ. It was Christ who was born for us. Christ who lived for us. Christ who died for us. Christ who raised again for us. And Christ who sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty interceding and praying for us. Now that's a lot of theological language to say 
say that you are the forgiven children of the Most High God because the only one who's in a position to condemn us happens to be the only one who can and does save us. As the forgiven children of the Most High God, get ready to be free and do something incredible. Thanks be to God. At this moment in time, before we go into the Gloria Patri, now as sometimes people would be passing the peace or something like that, I have elected that we share our joys. Because in sharing our joys, we know that we're free. So if anyone has a joy they'd like to share with the rest of us, take a moment, unmute yourself, share your joy, and give praise to God. I have a praise. Uh, my daughter was here last week visiting from Colorado, and my son and family came down to see her. And they are 16 years apart, and yet as adults, they are now good friends. And it just warms the heart. Thank you. I'm grateful. Amen. And thank you, Linda. I would like to share a joy. I have permission uh, to tell everybody Lisa Foreman and John Giraud are getting married tomorrow. They've been together forever. Oh. And they are actually going up to the courthouse and getting the paperwork done tomorrow and hoping to be married before noon. Wonderful. Congratulations. They gave me permission to share. Amen. So to John and Lisa and uh, our community that gets to celebrate with them, we give uh, God thanks. Thank you for sharing that, Barbara. I feel profound blessings. My granddaughter came down from Oregon, picked me up. We went to Temecula where my other granddaughter got married after eight years with her fiance. And the trip was so blessed. And my two granddaughters are believers and their strengths showed at this time. It was wonderful. Lots of weddings going on. Rita, amen to that, as you got to be a part of your granddaughter's celebration. In an eight-year engagement, or have they just been together eight years? They've been together eight years. Okay, well, bless their souls. Yeah. And the praise, we arrived here safely. Linda, it's wonderful to see Good. your face like that. Um, do you want to share anything about yourself? I think I'm going to recover from moving first. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 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 Linda, Linda just moved into town, and uh, I'm grateful that uh, she is here. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll learn more about them as time goes on. But welcome to, uh, uh, to our community and to this church. And uh, all I know is it's better with you. Um, My husband is out unpacking boxes still in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> Again, having having recently done that, uh, we still have boxes in the garage. But, oh, please don't uh, tell me that. <laughs> well, when your husband's done, Linda, he can come our way. He will. But, uh, <laughs> welcome, welcome. Thank you. I want to share a joy just to, I'm thankful for my mom and my best friend, Sharon, and um, they've been there for me. This week's been kind of rough for me personally, and they've both been there for me, and I'm just very thankful to have them. Um, Amen. It's a beautiful thing to have people who love you, who will surround you during the difficult times. And I'm, Marcy, glad that you're here this morning as well. It's better with you as well, and, uh, and prayers for you. And yet, in the midst of having a difficult week, that you can share joy is, in fact, a blessing. So thank you. Anybody else? I want to share Christy. that I'm thankful. Go ahead. Me? Um, well, I just wanted to share yes. that seminary has started for me. I'm in the third week already, and it's going very well. I'm, I'm having lots of fun. I've made friends with, this is interesting to me, I've made friends with a Messianic Jewish rabbi who is in my class. <laughs> and we struck up friendship because my daughter converted to Judaism and he was a Jew that converted to Christianity and so we've been sharing lots of discussions between the two of us so it's it's really interesting for me so I'm very thankful for the opportunity 
Well, amen to that. Marcy, you were about to say something else. I'm sorry. Uh, Karen was, yeah. I want to say that I'm very blessed to be here with my adoptive mama, Barbara, and my best friend, Marcy. Uh, I feel very, very blessed to have them both in my life. And I feel very blessed to have you as a pastor. I really like you, and uh, I'm very blessed today. Well, I really like you, too. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad that goes both ways. Yes. And, uh, and, and, and thank you. Oh, I don't, I don't know. Anybody else? Lots of joys today. That makes me happy. Mm -hmm. My school will be opening up to uh, students this coming week. So, so my school is opening up to students this week, so it's just going to be great to uh, see uh, kids back in classrooms again. But of course, that's a concern as well. So uh, prayers for uh, the joy of having kids back in classrooms, but also prayers for uh, level-headed Prayers um, in the midst of all of that and enjoy simultaneously that you get to uh, be back in person like that. Princess. Last night was a lot of fun because me and Mason made a giant, really awesome fort in our fire department, and that was a lot of fun. Yes, yes. Uh, you can tell that the children have two uh, clergy parents since there's a room that we call the fireside room in our house. Um, amen. Well, let's pray. Almighty and merciful God, for the abundance of blessings that you provide us, that when our eyes are open to them and we get to see, in fact, the abundance of goodness and joy that surrounds our lives, that we can give you praise, well, we give you thanks for all of this. And we remember what Meister Eckhart once said, that if the only prayer we were to ever utter is thank you, that would suffice. So, Lord, for all of this, we say thank you. We pray this in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. And if you would sing with me again as we move into uh, a bit of the chaos of that joy, uh, let's sing together the Gloria Patri. <laughs> Amen. 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 Um, we're moving into the prayers of the people. And what, real quick, uh, I was supposed to um, do a wedding yesterday that ended up being postponed. So uh, some time back, I asked Christy if uh, she would lead the service since I didn't know if I would be around an internet connection. And uh, that postponed wedding has allowed me here. But Christy has still uh, came up with the whole service, the call to worship, the prayer of confession, the hymns, uh, the scripture reading, the sir, uh, and everything else. But at this moment in time, I have one piece left of the service, but Christy will be leading us in the prayers of the people. And I am incredibly grateful that our own seminary students, our CRE, who is uh, keeping us going for the last year, is, uh, is still here to do all of this. And uh, so, Christy, if you'd like to take over for the prayers of the people. Yeah, she's back. <laughs> Does anyone have any prayer requests that they'd like to share? I would like to um, have a prayer for our friends. They both, their husband and wife, they both um, caught COVID and they're in quarantine right now. Okay, for friends that have COVID, Lord, hear our prayers. Let's play, pray for Nona, who's going to have surgery this week. Lift her up. Lord, hear our prayers. I'd like to lift up a prayer for those in uh, Louisiana and, and the folks that are going through uh, the storm Delta. 
and all that it has affected them. For some people, it's the third storm for the season. So. Yes, for the people caught in the hurricane areas that are really struggling right now, Lord, hear our hear prayers. prayers. Our former son-in-law, Mark, uh, died as a result of a motorcycle accident. So we just pray for the family that, uh, that they will be strong in God. Yes, in a time of loss and grief, let us pray for God's comfort and strength. Lord, hear our prayers. I'd like to offer a prayer for the children of our community and the children of our nation as they work through this very difficult year of distance from friends, distance from school, and then getting back to school and back to friends. So many transitions and so much change for them uh, and so many things that have been taken away. And I just hold them in my heart and I ask that we hold them in prayer as well. Yes, for the children that are going back to school, help them to make that adjustment. And for those who are left behind staying at home, we pray that you will be with them and help them to do well. Lord, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers. I want to pray for the same thing I did last time, but I have read about a book um, about that has a lot of blizzards, and I still want to pray, pray for my friend who lives there. Okay, for friends, Lord, hear our prayers. Let us pray together. Lord, we thank you that you have given us the privilege of praying for those in need. We thank you that you can meet all of our needs and that you love and take care of each and every one. For those needs mentioned, we pray that you will bless those individuals with thy presence. You will meet their needs according to your will. And for those left unmentioned, we lift them also to your care. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And now let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive, and forgive us, us our debts as we forgive, forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen indeed. And thank you. Um, I also just wanted, I, I saw on Facebook, uh, Thea wrote that the uh, Presbyterian women had a very successful rummage sale over the past two days, it became more of a yard sale, and praise God for that, so amen to that. And uh, at this moment in time, too, if you would take uh, another second just to uh, be as, we, uh, as we, we listen to some ministry of music.
Amen. And moving on to a time for children. If there are any children who'd like to join me, uh, oh, I don't have any. I, I know mine are here. I, I don't. Are there any others around? Not that I can see. But that is all right. Let's go to this kind of view. Welcome, welcome. Okay, kids, my kids. Mike and I can't quite see you in that, but you're there. All right, cool. Um, I have a quick question for you. Do you guys know what the Beatitudes are? Oh, there's Scarlett. Scarlett, you're there too. It's Beatitudes. Any idea? I know you've heard them before, but maybe you don't even know the term Beatitudes. I've preached on them. And what do you, what do you, what do you know about the Beatitudes? Anything? They're like commands. You don't know a lot about. So real quick, when Jesus was preaching a long sermon in the Gospel of Matthew, and it was called, he preached in Beatitudes on the Mountain. What's the name of that sermon? Any idea? Sermon on the Mount. Mount. Yes, Sermon on the Mount. So the Beatitudes are the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. Scarlett, did you know that? No. <laughs> No, well, good. So it's always nice when we're in church and we get to hear a little bit about what we didn't know. Now, does anyone know what the word beatitude means? That sounds a little crazy. Not attitude. <laughs> um, amen, amen. It doesn't mean that. It, it, um, so all the beatitudes start with a blessed are. What's blessed mean? Blessed. Okay, what's blessed mean? Well, like if I said, you know, when do we say bless sometimes? Bless you. Bless you. We say bless you. Now, now Jesus is basically saying bless you. And the first one is bless you who are poor in spirit. What does poor in spirit mean? Down, down. down or sad. In spirit low in spirit and and jesus says bless you who are poor in spirit for yours is the kingdom of god or another way of saying that is bless you who are poor in spirit for the kingdom is god is for you what's that sound like it's a fancy schmancy word but if you're poor in spirit and you're not feeling good or you're not sure if you're good enough or things like that jesus says the kingdom of god is for you you so have you ever felt sad yes. have you ever felt like you're not enough have you ever thought that you need to try harder or to have people like you or that you need to do more or something else yes. Scarlett, are you ever been nervous sometimes? Are you like maybe nervous for your mommy right now? No. No? Well, that's good. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> George might look a little bit more nervous behind your daddy. But, uh, and that's okay. And, um, but uh, like, if, if you're not like feeling all the way fantastic, Jesus is saying the kingdom of God is for you. So does that mean you need to be perfect to be in the kingdom of God? No. No, does that mean you need to have all your stuff together in the right way? No, does that mean that you need to make sure that you're always smiling, you can never be sad? No, in fact, later Jesus says, bless you when you're sad. It's more like blessed are those who mourn, um, for they will be comforted. But bless you when you're sad, because I'll make you feel better. So Jesus has all of these blessings, and, and normally we say, bless you when you're, like, when you normal. how do you normally feel blessed? Do you feel blessed when you're sad? No. Do you no. feel blessed when you're happy? Yeah. yeah. Do you feel blessed when you're joyful? Yes. Do you feel blessed when you have what you need? Yes. And Jesus has all of these blessings, and he's like, bless you when you're sad. Bless you when you don't have enough. Bless you when you're hurt. Bless you when you're persecuted. Bless you when you're beat up. Bless you when you, like, these are weird blessings. So Jesus has all of these weird blessings to let you know that even if you don't feel right, even if you don't feel normal, even if you don't feel like you have everything together, Jesus says, bless you then. Bless you. And one of the other things he says is, blessed are the peacemakers. Scarlett, what do you think peacemakers are? 
Peacemaker. I'm not sure. <laughs> not sure? But that's all right. Do you know what peace is? Like when someone has peace? Yes. Or no. Yes. Yes. Okay. So peace is like when everything, like we try to make things better, right? right. So right now we have a lot of discord and discord is a fancy word of saying there's a lot of anger in the world. And maybe if you guys have been paying attention to the news, it seems like there's a lot of stuff happening or maybe you're, I know your mommy and daddy have been talking about it. Maybe your mommy and daddy are talking about it. We're in all these things. And then Jesus says, Blessed are those who see all the anger and decide to bring peace, for they'll be called children of God. So you're a child and you're children, and I want to tell you that when you guys bring your smiles, when you bring your peace, when you know that we're not supposed to yell at each other and not like each other, that we're supposed to love each other, that's how you become a peacemaker. And when you're a peacemaker, Jesus says, people will see you and say, that's a child of God. Scarlett, you're a child of God. I know you're also a child of your parents, but you're a child of God. And you're a child of God. And you're a child of God. So when you go into the world and you get older, and us adults, we like to fight sometimes about things that don't really matter. Or things that do matter, but we like to point the finger at everybody else. Sometimes you need to bring the peace so that somebody can say, where are the children of God? And you can say right here. Let's pray. Yeah, we thank you for your odd blessings. And that for children who might recognize that they're strange. And teach us that, like my son said, they can be your commandments. For a different way of living. Well, may these little ones lead us. We pray this in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. We're moving on to the... Uh, let me do that. There we go. To uh, the sermon. And uh, Christy, I get out of your way. All right. I'm going to give you a little background to the scripture before we read it. Um, this... This comes very early in Jesus' ministry. In fact, if you read through the first four chapters of Matthew, we hear about his birth, and then we hear about his baptism, and then we hear about him choosing his disciples. So at this point, he has just chosen the last of the 12 to be his disciples, and they have been traveling around Capernaum, um, he's been doing very little teaching, but lots of healing, and they begin to develop a following. People that are amazed at his miracles, and they want to know more about this, this prophet from Galilee. And so they have this crowd following them, and people asking, Jesus, help me with this. Jesus, heal me of this. And at a point, Jesus realizes that he and his disciples kind of need a break from all of this, from the demands of the crowd. And so he says to his 12, let us go up to the mountaintop by ourselves and spend some time with God. Now you'll see in the, the Gospels, Jesus did this quite often. When life got very demanding and difficult, he would take his disciples and they would set themselves apart. A good lesson for all of us, I think. But he gets up there and he seats his disciples all around him. So kind of picture him. I always picture him sitting on a rock. So he sits a little higher and all the apostles are gathered around him. But the crowds catch up with them. And they don't really get away from the crowds. But the crowds stand back because they know that they are not really invitees to this gathering. And so they're standing back just to listen. And Jesus, who has just gathered his disciples, he sets about 
telling them, if you are going to be my followers, this is what you need to know. And this is who you need to be. And this commences the Sermon on the Mount, which some theologians also call the law of the new covenant. Um, but it, as I read through it, I see it more as a, this is what I expect of you. And it's interesting to me that he starts out with the Beatitudes, uh, the Blessed Rs, because as Garrett said, these aren't happy things by and large. And it's almost as if he's telling his followers, you know, if you follow me, life could be very hard. And I want you to know that you can still be happy. And so that's what we're going to look at today. The word blessed really means it is number one meaning is happy. Happy are those. And it can mean holy are those or peaceful are those. Um, those who have been given gifts by God. But we're going to focus on the happy are those. So hear now the word of the Lord. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons or the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of their righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, God. Well, I chose to look at the happy are those part of blessed and the Beatitudes. And I chose that for the reason that people right now are not very happy. There's lots of dissension and unhappiness with the way the government's doing or not doing things. There's unhappiness about being boxed in because of COVID. There is unhappiness about the social injustice. People are living very unhappy lives right now. And as I look at the Beatitudes, I see Jesus saying, yes, these things come. Life isn't always a bed of roses. I'm not going to give you a pair of rose-colored glasses to put on to look at the world. But I want you to know, you can still be happy if you are my followers. And so he lays out for me some character guidelines that if you live this way, if you make this part of who you are and you choose to do these things, you will find true happiness. So I started out by looking at what happiness is. And happiness is something, it's probably the number one desire of everybody alive. Everything we do is seeking happiness in some way or another. All of us want to evade, evade 
suffering and pain and sadness. And we spend a lot of energy trying to find happy. What is happy? And if you think about everything you do, it's somehow connected with your happiness. You seek friends and mates who make you happy. They make you feel good. Um, you seek entertainment to make you happy. You have a job to make money, to buy things, which will make you happy. Um, just about everything circles back to that desire for happiness. But what we find out is that most of these things don't keep us happy. They may momentarily make us feel happy, but they all fade. Every single one of them fade. Friends desert us. Mates lose their love for us. People get sick and die and we lose them. Our things, like we were talking about the kids and their toys, we get these things and after a little while we we don't even notice them. They no longer bring us any joy and we're on to the next new thing, the new fad. And so our happiness is very fleeting. We um, latch onto these things thinking, this is, this is gonna give me the good life. This is gonna make me happy and I will be happy forevermore. And we all know that doesn't work out that way for any of us, because life just isn't that way. And Jesus knew that too. Jesus knew that for the disciples, following him wasn't always going to be wonderful miracles and wonderful teaching, that they were gonna come across some suffering too, that they were going to be persecuted they were going to be ridiculed. Um, they were going to be chased out of some of the towns that they went to. He knew that it wasn't going to be all roses, like I said. And so he tells them, before you start out, be of good character. Build your character so that you know that the Lord will bless you no matter what happens to you. And that will be your true source of happiness. If you can focus on that idea, God will always bless me. You will have a happiness that won't disappear with the newest fad. It won't go away when you get sick. It won't go away when you lose a loved one. And so as I look at the Beatitudes, I basically see three things. Number one, he says, happy are those. If you replace the word blessed with happy, happy are those. And then the second part, he tells the character trait that these people have. What is it about these people that they are happy for. And the third part, he follows up by saying, this is God's blessing. If you focus on this blessing, rather than the difficulty you are going through, you will find happiness in spite of your circumstances. And so I was going to go through these eight Beatitudes just real briefly and kind of look at those three points for each one. The first one he says is, blessed are you who are poor in spirit. Now, poor in spirit really means those of you who realize that you really aren't worthy of God. That if you just, you know, I'm not good enough. I don't pray enough. I don't love enough. I, you know, we all have this list of I don'ts. I don't do enough. Um, realizing that we are not holy like God. And the character trait that this really exhibits 
is humility. Humility is realizing who we are before the Lord. Realizing that he alone is good. He alone is perfect. He alone is loving. And that we can never be God. We can never replace him with anything that will be God. That is humility before the Lord. And Jesus says, if you are humble before your Lord and you realize who you are before your Lord, that he is going to take care of you. He says that if you just hold on and you focus on the fact that God is great, that you will know that you will be taken care of. And you will find God will give you grace to overcome your weaknesses. And that day by day, you'll grow. And you'll know more of him. And you will feel more of his love. And your experience of him will grow. So he says, be humble before your Lord. And thou shalt receive blessings. Well, the next one he says is blessed are those or happy are those who mourn. And that, that seems so incongruous. Who is happy when they're mourning? But mourning isn't necessarily the grieving we do for a lost loved one or a lost friend. We can mourn any kind of loss in our lives. If I lose my job, I'm going to mourn that. I'm going to be sad about that. If I lose my house and my belongings in the hurricane, I'm going to mourn that. I'm going to be sad about that. We are all, as a, a country, mourning right now our loss of life the way it used to be. We all are experiencing a sense of loss because we can't live the way we used to live. Things that we took for granted, we no longer have. So we are all in mourning. And Jesus said to them, you know, the character trait here is that you don't let your mourning get you down. You can sit and and brood on everything you've lost. And you'll just make yourself feel worse. Or you can focus on the fact that God will eventually remove your sadness. It won't may not come right away. Um, when you lose a loved one, it may be years before you lose your sadness. Or you may never totally lose your, your sadness. But he's promising God knows that you hurt. God knows what you've lost. And God is with you. He never leaves you. He is always there holding your hand, carrying you along. And you can have a sense that all will work out in the end, that all will be right. And you can know that you are never alone for God is always with you. And that is what comforted really means is knowing that everything is gonna be all right. And we as Christians know that because we know that God is with us and he's always with us. Well, the next beatitude is blessed or happy are the meek. Now, meek is a word that has kind of gotten a bad rap in our society. Um, we see the meek as being the milk toast person that never stands up for anything. But meekness really means a person who seeks the good of others before the good of themselves. 
meekness means I care about you or I love you enough that I want good to come to you. And I focus on doing my part in that and I don't sit and worry about what am I going to get out of it. That is what the meek are. They are the ones that put others first. We may be having an argument and I'll say, have it your way. And I say that because making you happy is more important to me than winning the argument. I'm giving in because I care about you. That is the essence of love. And love is the, the law that Jesus gave us to love God and to love others as ourselves. And you notice that he said to love others first and as ourselves. It's to seek the good of those around us. That's what being meek is. Now, sometimes being meek does end up in us getting walked on. There are people that take advantage of that uh, willingness to put them first. Um, we may not get positions of power because we're not seen strong enough to push ahead and get what we want. But Jesus said, you know, if you are a meek person, God is going to let you help reign in the new creation. You will reign with Jesus Christ. And you will have power with Jesus Christ. You are chosen because I know you care about the good of others. And so that's what blessed are the meek means to me. The next one is happy are those who hunger for righteousness. Now, the character trait here is, is pretty obvious. It's the person that chooses to live a godly life. I want to be a good person. I want to live the way God calls me to live. I'm hungry for that. I want to, to learn more about God. I want to, to know more God. Just like I want to know more, so I go to seminary. And I try to learn more. I have that hunger inside that God placed there. And he tells them that if you truly, if you truly want to have righteousness in your life, you know, turn to me because I will send my spirit and he will strengthen you and he will show you the way. He will bring understanding to you. He will help you to learn and to grow and to become more righteous each and every day. It's not something you have to do on your own, but you have to acknowledge, Lord, I need your help. Because I can't on my own, because I am a sinful person, going back to the humility part, I know I can't be righteous enough. Please help me. And in this beatitude, he promises that God will help us and give us more understanding, more insight, and help us to become more righteous every day. And then he says, happy are the merciful. And the character trait there is having empathy for those who are suffering, empathy for those who are in poor situations or have less than we do, it's, you know, it's not saying, boy, am I glad I'm not as bad off as he is. It's saying, no, I really feel bad that this person is suffering. I really feel bad that, you know, this couple got divorced. I feel bad about the social injustice in this world. I feel bad about people being mistreated because of the color of their skin. I truly feel bad about that. Um, and I do what I can 
to make it better. That's mercy, is truly having empathy and saying, I want to make things better for you. And Jesus tells the disciples, if you are merciful to others, God will show you mercy. And isn't that what God says to us? I forgive you for what you've done. I still love you. You're still in my family. And I want to make things better for you. God wants us to know that he has empathy for our suffering. He knows what we feel. He knows the hurt, the struggles of day in living, and that he's going to do his best to make it better. And so focus on that. When things aren't going so great in your lives, if you focus on God will be merciful. He knows how I'm feeling and he's doing what he can to make things better, to improve things. And then he goes on to say, happy are the pure in heart. Well, the pure in heart is the person who follows God's will. He seeks to live as God calls him to live and lives a good life. And we've all known people that we've thought are truly pure in heart. You know, this person is just golden. They treat everyone nice. They, they help the poor. They do this, they do that. And they never look for any return out of all this. They do it simply because they have a pure heart or a good heart. And God says, you are going to be happy because you are a child of God. You are part of God's family. No one can take that away from you. No one is going to tell you you're the illegitimate child of God. No, you are God's child with everything that that implies. That you shall receive your inheritance, that you shall be loved and cherished, that you will be taken care of, that he will never leave you. He'll never leave you alone to fend for yourself because you're his child. You didn't say you're my servants, you're my slaves. He said, no, you are my child. If you will but be pure in heart to set your heart on me and to do what I ask you to do. And then he goes on to say, happy are the peacemakers. And the characteristic of a peacemaker is someone who seeks harmony between people. This is the person who doesn't like to see conflict between individuals. They don't go out seeking to start conflict between themselves and other people. We all know those people that love to pick a fight just for the sake of picking a fight. I, I have one of those in my extended family. He just loves to poke at people to get them upset. That's his thing. Um, that's not a peacemaker. A peacemaker says, I want to live in harmony with everyone, and I want everyone else to live in harmony. Well, we see that here when we talk about social justice. You know, we, we don't want this hatred between groups of people. We don't want to see people fighting and rioting against each other. So what can we do to help in that? What can we do to bring the groups together? What can we do to bring harmony in this situation? And God says, for these people, things sometimes don't work out so well. They aren't always able to bring harmony, 
Um, sometimes you can't resolve a conflict. Sometimes um, you can't help upsetting someone, making them angry with you. But he says, you should focus on the fact that you are my children. You are doing what I seek to do all the time. I seek to bring peace between people and you're helping me. May not always work because the world is not perfect, but you are following my example and you shall be happy. So there's your focus with that beatitude. And then he says, blessed are the righteousness that are the righteous that are persecuted. Those that that suffer because they call me Lord. For those who people make fun of, who insult, who who imprison us, who martyr us. I've been watching a, a show about the Reformation and the great persecutions that the Protestants went through during the Refu Reformation at the hands of the Catholic Church. They were burned alive. They were drawn and quartered. They were drugged through the streets all because you know, they called Jesus their Lord and saw a different way of worshiping him. And Jesus said, you're going to be persecuted if you follow me. There are going to be people that make fun of you because you're a Christian. There will be people who will imprison you because he knew that many of the apostles would be put into prison for their beliefs. He said, this is, this is just what's going to happen. So I'm preparing you now for this. I want you to have the character to stand firm. Not to let yourself be drawn away from me because of what comes your way. That stick to itiveness of holding on. And if we look at the lives of his disciples, that's what every one of them did. They were persecuted. They were all put to death, except for John. They were all martyred. Um, they were abused by the Jewish leaders. They were, like I said, driven out of towns. Um, they suffered a lot because they believed in Jesus Christ. But none of them gave up. They all went ahead and held on to him held on to his ways, and continued to share the good word. And that's what Jesus wants us to do, to stand firm. Because we will be ridiculed. People will make fun of us. People will make fun of you if you say grace before your meal in a restaurant. They'll make comments. People will, will judge you because you're Catholic or Protestant. You'll be harassed because of that. There will come a time when we'll even be put in prison for being Christian. Jesus said that was coming. But he says, stand firm. Hold tight to me. Do not give in. Do not give in to that pressure to conform to the world. And he tells them that if you do this, you shall have the kingdom of God. You shall be a part of my kingdom forever and ever and ever. A kingdom where you are honored and cherished and loved and where there is no ridicule and persecution and death. You have that promise. Keep that in mind when these things happen to you. And you shall find happiness in spite of them. So in conclusion, what I want to say is that Jesus knew that the disciples had a hard road ahead of them. 
He knew that they were going to pay for following him. They were going to pay for believing he was the son of God. But he wanted them to say, be able to say, like Paul did, I am happy in every circumstance because I am God's child. I have everything I need. God is with me always, and I have eternal rewards waiting for me. And no one can take any of that from you. And that's the kind of happiness that lasts, lasts for eternity. So friends, I, I urge you to seek to, to be people of Christly character, to seek the kingdom of God and to, to choose the attitude of happiness. Amen. Now, the song I chose for today is one we have never done. It's in our, our Presbyterian hymnal. It's called Blessed Are They. And someone put the Beatitudes to music. The tune is pretty simple. And I think after probably the first or second verse, You'll have the tune down pat, and you'll be able to sing the words along. But it has eight verses. It basically says the Beatitudes in music. So let us enjoy that.
And uh, tithes and offerings, as always, appreciate them. You can give to the uh, church by uh, online or send a check to the P.O. box there. And, uh, and thank you. And let's sing a little bit of the doxology. Is flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Now receive thou the benediction. May you go forth as the children of God and enjoy the happiness of knowing that nothing can take that away from you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You all have a blessed week, and we'll see you next Sunday. Amen. Thank you all, everybody. And feel free to chat. I've left you speechless, huh?